Hey guys, welcome to Daniel and Gian Talk, and videos like this suck. I shouldn't have to make a video like this. No one should have to make a video like this. 38 people at least are dead in what is being called the worst terrorist attack in Kashmir since the whole disputed region started uh, three decades ago. And, I, and I'm actually going to read what happened here from the Washington Post because I don't want to screw up any details. The attack occurred Thursday afternoon around 3.15 p.m., police officials said, as a security convoy of 70 vehicles traveled down a major highway toward the city of Srinagar, excuse me if I'm mispronouncing it, an explosives-laden vehicle driven by a suicide bomber rammed into a bus carrying dozens of paramilitary personnel, said Sanjay Sharma, a spokesperson for India's Central Reserve Police Force. The killings will inflame tensions between nuclear-armed rivals India and Pakistan, which both claim that, well, you guys know this, but I'll finish the sentence anyway, which both claim the Him Himalayan territory of Kashmir. Um, yeah, so jaish e mohammed I'm, again, probably mispronouncing this, or Ami Muhammad, a military group, a, a militant group, excuse me, that seeks to merge Indian-held Kashmir with Pakistan, claim responsibility for Thursday's attack. Based in Pakistan, the group is led by Masood Osar, a uh, radical cleric. The United States officially labeled the Army of Muhammad a terrorist organization nearly two decades ago. In 2017, Washington pushed the UN Security Council to designate Assar as a terrorist, but the move was vetoed by China. You know, we, we there's incidents like this in America, not car bombings, not suicide bombings, but mass shootings, and the American media is very hesitant to call these individuals terrorists. I, I, as a matter of fact, unless they're brown, they usually don't get labeled as a terrorist. The shooter in Las Vegas who killed 50 and, and, and injured over 700 was not labeled as a domestic terrorist, despite the fact that that's what the fuck he is. So the fact that the United States recognizes the Army of Muhammad as a terrorist group, I have no problem calling a spade a spade and calling these fucking despicable terrorists what they are, despicable fucking terrorists. Because at the end of the day, these are 38 families that will no longer have those people to talk to. I'm sure there's fathers. I don't know if they're all men who died. There might be some women involved. I don't know the specific details. But at the end of the day, on Valentine's Day of all days, this is what happens. It's despicable, it's disgusting, and it personally makes me unsettled. Now, I'm not an Indian. So for me to say that as an outsider obviously does not hold as much weight as an Indian who would be sitting in front of this camera, who maybe lives in Kashmir, or who knows family in Kashmir, or who has people in the military, et cetera, et cetera. So I have a question for everyone out there. You know, how, how, how does the nation receive news like this? Because here in the United States, if there's a group of military, army, marines, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, who die via car bomb, via suicide bomb, or anything like that, for the most part, it doesn't necessarily really enter the mainstream media, unfortunately. I, it, the war has been going on for so long that it almost becomes insignificant. It, it, it's, it's unfortunate, it's sad to say, but I don't know how things are over there. You know, does this, does, does this attack just take up all the news that's going to be going on the next few days? Does the news cycle just become about this for the next few days or weeks or months? Uh, is this going to create more tension in the region? You know, will there be counterattacks? You know, watching the Uri Surgical Strike movie, I learned that when a, an att a similar attack like this happened a few years ago, you know, Modi said, you guys are fucked now because if you guys don't have terrorists in Pakistan, well, then when we kill all of your terrorists, you can't claim and say, hey, you guys killed our men because they don't exist. And so I'm very curious to know, you know, what's going to happen here. Uh, will there be more retaliatory strikes of any kind? Because this seems to be a pretty big attack, obviously, uh, if, if the Washington Post and, and others are calling this the worst attack during this three decade period. Um, Speaking of Modi, he, he, he called the attack despicable. He said, I strongly condemn this dastardly attack. The sacrifices of our brave security personnel should not go in vain. And uh, yeah, and, I, and I, what I know, the little I know about Modi, I know he cares a lot about national security. 
and he 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 definitely was going to take this seriously so i'm personally expecting some sort of retaliatory uh response but again i'm an outsider i don't know the ins and outs the, the day-to-day or much about him but but this is just my perspective from the outside uh salman khan tweeted about it my heart goes out to the jo- uh, excuse me let me repeat that my heart goes out for the jawans of our beloved country and their families who lost their lives as martyrs to save our families you stand for india vicky kashal said deeply saddened and shocked to hear the news of the terror attack in Pulwama. my heart goes out to the families of the brave crpf soldiers we lost today and praying for the speedy recovery of those injured and finally, Akshay Kumar also chimed in and said, Numb beyond belief at the dastardly terror attack on hashtag CRPF soldiers in Pulwama. May God give peace to their souls and strength to their grieving families. Wishing the injured a speedy recovery. We can't let this be forgotten. I don't think it will be forgotten because it's only going to be a matter of time before this gets made into a movie. And... I mean, Uri surgical strike. Every single major political conflict almost always ends up as a film. And I'm curious to know how long it's going to take before Bollywood producers say, you know, let's let's cash in on this. Let's 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 create a story about this. And uh, you know, it's it's unfortunate. It sucks. I just I I personally, and as as people who've seen my Yuri review, I, I, I talk about this. I, I hate the loss of life, period, period. You know, we're all human beings. We obviously have hundreds and hundreds and some for some cultures, thousands of years of history of conflict between nations, between cultures, between different ideologies, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not as just easy as just saying, be fucking nice. Don't attack people. Don't stand up for what you believe in, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, when is it going to be enough? You know, I, I feel like there's this stigma where, well, first of all, reaction channels usually won't comment like this because they're afraid. They're afraid of the audience. They're afraid to turn their viewers away. They're, they're, they're afraid to trigger people. They're afraid to give their honest and truthful opinion. And here on Daniel G on Talk, Gian and I have never strayed from that. Now, we might have held our tongue and maybe didn't say something because we realized it might offend people or something like that. But for the most part, if we firmly believe in something, we're going to give our fucking strong opinions. And that's why I have no fucking shame saying that the people who acted in this way are nothing but, nothing short of fucking cowards. It's disrespectful. But at the same time, is there any respect when, when shit like this goes on? No. I'm a suicide bomber. Come on, that's 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 to me that's one of the most pathetic means of conflict, and you know I I've read some tweets um, earlier this morning when I when I got news of this where people were saying, what do you expect? They're military. They're the ones you're supposed to attack, you know. And and to a certain extent, there's some there's some truth to that, you know. These are the people that were you know, instilled to defend India, to defend the border, to defend wherever. Because I, I, I don't know what specific uh, defense this particular unit did for the country, but they signed up for it. So by doing that, they've already put a target on their back. You know, Pakistan, I'm sure, knows where the bases are. I'm sure they did get leaked intel about these convoys, et cetera, et cetera. And otherwise, they wouldn't have been able to pull it off like they did. Like they did. And it, it's unfortunate, you know, because it's, it's not just Indian soldiers, it's American soldiers. You know, these people sign up and are willing to give their lives for the security and for other people. And so they do become the targets. And unfortunately, they are caught in the crossfire and they are the ones who suffer the most, in my opinion, because ultimately they're losing their lives. You, you can't suffer any more than losing your own life. And, and you know, the... the so it's 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 fucking it's it's awful. It sucks, and uh, I'm just curious to know what you know what you guys out there feel about this. What's your opinion? I mean, I can kind of guess that it's a, it's a super you know passionate, angry response. You may or may not want more lives taken as a result of this attack. Um, but let me know in the comments how you guys feel because you know. I think this is the first time we've experienced, we being Gian and myself, uh, 
a terrorist attack while doing these reactions. Uh, you know, we've only read about them or seen them in movies previous to now. And so I, I, I you know, my, my condolences, my heart goes out, you know, I, my uncle didn't pass away be a suicide bomber. So, you know, he died of natural causes. So I can't even imagine if that was the way he went. You know, if, if he was out living his life, doing his thing, doing his duty, and then some fuckheads decided to blow him up because of fucking bullshit reasons. I, I can't sit here and say, yeah, let's just all be nice and get along. You know, I might want blood too. I mean, I remember being a little kid, being a naive little kid when 9-11 happened. And I didn't know what the fuck, who attacked us. I was too young. I didn't know anything. But I remember hearing on the news Saddam Hussein and, 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 and Afghanistan. And, you know, I remember the bombing of Baghdad. And be like, yes, we're fucking getting them. You know, I, I didn't realize until later that that was actually all bullshit lies and that the people who were dying on that day probably did not deserve to die. But at that age, my point is that rage, that fire, it's there. And so I can understand if there's a lot of emotional people out there right now dealing with this. Um, but yeah, please let me know in the comments how things are going in the country, what, what the protocol is for things like this. Does, does security get tightened now? Um, again, I'm asking these questions because I'm an outsider and I just don't know, but I care to know. I want to know. I, I, I want to learn about different regions of the world, different parts of the world, because at the end of the day, what happens in India could happen here. What happens here can happen anywhere else because we all live on this fucking planet together. We're all fucking humans. We all come from the same spot. So there's these these desires and these emotions and these rage and et cetera, et cetera, all live within us to some certain extent. So the more I learn, the better I can become, the better person I become, the more insight I can become. And, you know, for the few subscribers I have out there that are from Pakistan, you know, what's, what is your take on this situation? Does this anger you as, as, a, as a Pakistani citizen? Do you fucking, do you also condemn these terrorist, terrorist organizations? Because I can't ever sit here and pretend that every single North Korean is a, is a, is a terrorist. Every single North Korean is a bad person. You know, and I, I'm using them as an example because here in the States, when we think of North Koreans, we just think of enemy, the devil, you know, maybe not the devil, but but Kim Jong-il is evil and, and, and Rocket Man, as Trump likes to say. And so, you know, but I'm sure if I were to, well, maybe not me because I can't speak Korean, but I'm sure that there's Koreans up north who maybe don't want to be there. I mean, obviously, you've heard stories of escaping and fleeing, and I'm sure the same could be said in Pakistan, you know, fleeing down into India or, or out of the country in general. Um, and I might be sounding super fucking ignorant here, and I'm, I'm okay with that because I don't know any better. I'm just being honest about it. But, I, but at the end of the day, the facts are the facts. 38 people at least are dead. Never fucking coming back because of some cowardly bullshit. Because of that because of ideology, because this is my land, so fuck you. It's, 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 it's retarded, and I don't have any shame saying that. It's retarded. But anyway, guys, my thoughts, condolences, you know, whatever, my energy, what, you know, whatever you believe in, I send it out to you guys, and uh, yeah, we stand with you, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.